Me. What are we to make of all of this? I mean, it seems laughable from our perspective, but maybe not so if we were in Russia. Well, we are in, um, to be ultra-trendy, into the metasphere here, that there's a lot of virtual reality going on. You will get, in Red Square, indeed, after a signing, an announcement by Putin that this is part of sovereign Russia and Russia will defend itself, and then there'll be a rock concert. And how are they going to defend it? They are sending, allegedly now, call-ups. They're not recruits because some of them are veterans, but they're told to bring their own tents, their own cooking material, their own food. Uh, he's got to put, if he really means that they can defend this through the winter, another 100,000 in. He hasn't got them. He hasn't got fully trained troops to do that. That's why, in terms of the propaganda, the virtual war, and the messaging has been... Very, very interesting. And a lot of it is digital, the way the war is being fought, in a way that the Russians didn't understand and the Ukrainians proved very, very good at. They're very adaptable, they're very good at improvising, and that's how they've made up with the lack of numbers. But in the propaganda war, Zelensky will say, we're not going to give in, we're going to stand on the lines. They're fighting very hard, and it's pretty ghastly fighting around uh, Kherson, for example. But overnight, his speech was to the minorities, the ethnic minorities in the great Russian Federation, saying, what are you doing coming to this war? This isn't your war, coming from places even like the fringes of Kazakhstan, where they are very fed up with what's, what's, what's being told uh, them about this now being a war. It's gone from a, a special military operation to a war of national defence. And that is where Putin is extremely vulnerable because his one instrument was we have the third or fourth mightiest army in the world. It doesn't look so mighty now, does it? No, it doesn't. I mean, we hear reports, don't we, from Russia where, you know, mothers do not want their sons going into the war and young men particularly are fleeing over the borders to just get out of Russia to, to uh, resist being conscripted. Um, but so, so we, we can't figure out what Putin thinks he's going to achieve by this. Well, it's figuring out what Putin thinks is, is so important now. And I think that as things converge on him from the circle round him, and it's primarily two groups which, who really need to be questioning him unless they go in for, as I said, the kind of bloodbath with these raw, raw recruits. They're not trained properly, they're, they're not equipped properly. The two groups are, one, the old securitocracy, his old mates formerly from the KGB, now in the FSB police, and the other is the generals. And as far as we can make out, the more discontented of those groups is the generals, because he fires them, he blames them. There'll be a lot more blame over the weekend, by the way, for the failures. The one thing I think he's going to be much more wary about is nuclear blackmail threatening the nuclear card. And it, it, I think it's for very, very interesting and rather nitty-gritty, granular reasons, because it's actually no good. It looks as if the, these tactical weapons that they bring forward are not terribly good, or rather the vehicles they're on are not terribly good. Back to it being digital. And we can see everything. We can see once they move, we'll see it. There's a, there's a problem here, isn't there, in the, a, a, a natural escalation, if you like, and, and our guest last, in the last hour was, was, was saying this, that now Ukraine, the, the Ukrainian forces, supported by NATO, are, you know, the, the equipment, you know, not boots on the ground, they're not, if they move into these regions now that have been annexed, Russia is not going to see them as defending Ukraine, they're going to see them as invading Mother mm. Russia. Well, that, 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 that's the two plus two equals four logic of Putin's thinking. But it's crazy because we've got the four oblasts, as the districts are called, and Russia isn't in full control of any one of those four. four. Further, the East, they have greater control, but they're on the line. But when you take uh, Donetsk, oblast, they've only got a, a, a portion of it, Kherson, they can't even maintain a civil government in Kherson because they get bombed and trashed by these medium-range rockets, uh, the, uh, the high mass, the kind of weaponry that, as you say, that NATO has supplied. I think the big question is, and it's the thing that Putin is banking on, is that you'll get Ukraine fatigue among the EU and NATO.